Well, hello everyone. My name is Mark Brown and I'm uh, the director of the National Institute for Digital Learning at Dublin City University. I'm just going to talk with you about unboxing micro-credentials. Uh, a welcome gift for the future or not? Um, I've actually anchored this brief talk in the metaphor of unboxing. Uh, unboxing is something that takes place on YouTube. You might want to investigate it, but essentially now that micro-credentials are out of the box, what do we do? Some people might want to put them back in the box, believe it or not. So, um, three things to really cover in probably about a 10, 15 minute quick video. One, what are they? Well, everyone has their two cents worth about that. Why the level of interest? And finally, where should we go from here? Um, one thing I'd like to alert you to though, because it's kind of in the same uh, genre as unboxing, there's that thrill that comes when you unbox a present, you know, the excitement, what's in the present, a craze, but actually this article is worth a read because it also anchors the micro-credentialing movement in the neoliberal sort of globalization movement, but also reminds us about the long history of hype and hope in education and educational fads. Okay, enough said. What are they? Everyone tries to answer this question. Yes. There's an element of the idea of badging that comes from our um, uh, culture, if you like, and girl guides, scouts, and so forth, uh, badging in the gaming industry. And um, interestingly, when we try to put all of this into some kind of definition of what we mean by micro-credentials, I'm a member of the uh, uh, European Commission's micro-credentialing consultation group that was meeting all year. And here's a slide that comes from different definitions where we tried to vote on which one we thought would be most appropriate or at least early in the days of our deliberations where we all sat. And even amongst an expert group, you couldn't get people to agree. Um, I like to keep things as simple as possible, if only because I have to sometimes explain what we're trying to do with micro-credentialings, uh, micro-credentialing to people, and you just need to put it into some language that's accessible. So here, I'm going to give you three dimensions. By no means is this intended to be the definitive definition of micro-credentials. It's just a, a thought tool. Firstly, you've got the stackable, credit bearing. Um, hence captured by the Lego bricks. It's on the y-axis, it's lifelong learning, career-long learning or career readiness, um, and tends to be formal and non-formal. Most people get this, that's not too hard. This side of the um, dimension or the second dimension is more like a honeycomb or on the um, horizontal um, where people plug gaps in their learning, mostly out of their own interest. It doesn't necessarily at all have to be credit bearing and um, work related. Um, so lots of people are engaged in non-formal learning, informal forms of learning. But of course, it's not quite as simple as that. And I try to capture this if you've got that X and Y axis in your mind visually, where there's a diagonal dimension that cuts across it. Because for example, if someone happened to get a badge because they attended a conference, and went to a couple of other workshops, but they packaged that into a portfolio where they reflected on the learning that took place and their development over time, then that reflection in the portfolio could well be assessed and could then credit towards a micro-credential. Um, so it's not quite mutually exclusive on that X and Y axis. So that's one way of thinking about it, just to conceptualize it. Here's another way, by all means, not definitive, but just to kind of visually map what we have. Currently, we already have macro credentials. They're called degrees, master's degrees, even postgraduate certificates and the like are macro credentials. Micro credentials are just a micro version of that. But importantly, um, as captured by the uh, diagram here, micro credentials are in the credit bearing unbundled quadrant. So they are breaking things up more than previously as distinct from what should we call just badges, um, short courses perhaps, that are non-credit bearing. So just a way to express this in a kind of mapping the credential ecology. But by no means is this mutually exclusive, a lot of overlap and leakage, if you like. Okay, that's my effort to try to give you at least a bit more on what definitions we might be thinking of here. Why the interest? Well, lots of reasons. Micro-credentials actually, uh, have been driven in many respects by the MOOC movement. There are now over 800 different kinds of micro-credentials if you trust Class Central's analysis earlier in the year. My own university was 
the first on the FutureLearn platform to issue a micro-credential credit-bearing stackable in the area of fintech. And of course, to give you an insight on an institutional uh, driver, the market for this, in inverted commas, is now global, uh, not just domestic. Um, in Australia, uh, there have been initiatives because I'm part of the COVID-19 crisis to develop and fund what's called a micro-credential marketplace, a recognition that to get people back to work following the crisis, they don't need to do whole degrees, they need short courses to help them retool, to retrain for perhaps new careers. Um, in the United States, the survey here from a few years ago by Gallup um, asks employers, has higher, does higher education in your country? Um, is it preparing graduates with the skills and competencies for my business? Well, you would hardly say that the answer said that universities were indeed responding. Um, then, of course, if I take a bit tongue-in-cheek, earlier this year, actually I think it was only uh, June, the White House made a ruling that it was now going to focus on skills, not traditional college degrees. So this skill focus is a very big driver. In Ireland, we've been involved with some colleagues this year in a national survey of micro-credentials of employers and employees. And it's certainly the case that there is an interest in skills training and in the micro-credentialing movement, even if they don't necessarily understand what we mean and how it might work. Um, ultimately though, in Europe, this is a big focus as reflected in the European Skills Agenda launched back in July, where Action 10, recognizes the need for a European approach to micro-credentials, more specifically because we know fundamentally from the evidence there's a huge skills gap pending already, uh, and particularly in the IT area. So uh, I shouldn't lose sight of the ultimate driver for me, which is actually about promoting lifelong and lifelong, life-wide learning. Uh, and actually in Ireland, we have a very low rate of lifelong learning, albeit that just yesterday, the European Commission launched the new, the latest education and training monitor report, where I think we're now up to about 12.5%. But this is very low, very low levels of participation in lifelong learning. So where to from here? Um, well, we have a working group, uh, there, or a consultation group. We have uh, some documents that will be coming out. Some have already been released, so we hope to see um, where that will take us in ways that we haven't been able to previously as a roadmap, if you like. Uh, perhaps the most important thing for me, where to from now, is beyond what are often referred to as warm body badges. Uh, and that means, like we have got in Ireland, which is quite unique, is that our national qualification framework already accommodates what are called special purpose awards. So we're able to use the me mechanism or the machinery of our existing quality assurance processes and qualifications framework to issue my credential, credentials. And in fact, we've just recently secured quite a so sizable amount of money working through the Irish Universities Association, 12 to 12 million for our university-wide national micro-credentialing initiative. Um, but ultimately, all roads, since I used that word previously, should in many respects be leading towards and back again to the European qualifications framework and related frameworks and quality assurance standards and the like. For me, this is really important. Um, but at the same time, we shouldn't lose sight of the disruptive dimension that micro-credentials might bring to what is still traditionally quite a 19th century based credential ecology. So we're part of the European um, Consortium of Innovative Universities, the ECIU University, funded under the University Alliances. And with this funding, we're trying to develop with the 12 university partners using micro-credentials and micro-learning experiences, a really fundamentally different business model going forward. Wrapping up, um, I just want to do a bit of self-publicity for the micro-credential observatory that we maintain in the National Institute for Digital Learning, which just tries to give a whole uh, aggregation of reports, policy documents, new initiatives that are happening. So if you're trying to keep up, we're doing our best to provide links to what's happening globally in this area. Final comment, I know this is a bit of a rushed talk, but I do have a, a slogan I sometimes use, but it's not a slogan. This is really quite deep. I think in reminding us that ultimately micro-credentials is not what we're talking about. Micro-credentials have to be part of a much bigger idea. Uh, perhaps the slide here captures some of that. 
I've also refer referenced back to lifelong and lifelong, life-wide learning. Um, so we need to be very cautious that we don't get so preoccupied on micro-credentials, we lose sight of the bigger picture. On that note, thank you very much. I hope you've um, taken something from this talk and I look forward to having further discussions in the future.